Hi, I'm Vicki Ross, and I have been a member of this church about four years. I'm just telling my testimony today. I grew up believing in God, and I had two alcoholic parents. My dad got sober about 10 years uh, before he died. Anyway, my mom, at age 46, got breast cancer and died. I was 17, and very devastating time in my life. And uh, about four years later, my dad died of a choking accident. And then I went on to watch my mom's two younger sisters each get breast cancer. One died the second time she got breast cancer, and the other died uh, of ovarian cancer at 61. Uh, her youngest sister died at 57. So I really always kind of walked through life knowing this was looming after me and, and uh, I could possibly be facing this. I was about 40 years old, and they offered me the breast cancer gene test and I just said I don't want to know I you know I uh, I was the oldest of my generation of so anyway about the age of 45 I did decide to have that breast cancer gene test and I came back positive for the BRCA1 and 2 which meant I had an 86 percent chance of getting breast cancer in my lifetime and they told me usually the hereditary ones are most aggressive so I was given a ton of options. I was given prophylactic surgeries or meds I could be on, but I only opted for uh, getting mammograms and MRIs at six month intervals and regular visits with an oncology doctor. And at about the age of 50, I started having a pain in my right side and I didn't think it was anything, but I decided to have it checked out. I am an x-ray tech at St. Mary's Hospital in Detroit Lakes and semi-retired, but anyway, uh, I worked the overnight shift there for about 20 years. But I was lifting patients and I would just skirmish in pain because it hurt. And uh, this nurse said, Vicki, go back to your oncologist. You need, you need to just make sure you're okay. And I just so I think I just pulled a muscle. But anyway, I went to the oncology doctor. He thought it was just a pulled muscle, but he said, I'll be glad to order an MRI if you'd like. And uh, I went home and that nurse said, get that MRI and didn't expect they were gonna find anything. And uh, I got a call right before my follow-up appointment saying, uh, we wanna make sure you're coming in for this appointment. And I knew, I knew instantly that they had found something and just was kind of in this state of terror kind of. And uh, so I got there the next day, he read the report and said it was either one of uh, three different kinds of cancer or it was like a precancerous condition and at, after reading the report he said Vicki you need to have a double mastectomy as soon as possible you know we could be talking about your life here and so I was like okay 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 I'm, I'm in and I had been so terrified of that surgery of pain or like I wouldn't be able to put my arms above my head or and it was nothing it was I mean I went home with some drains in my back and for like a week and it was just it was the easiest thing I went through I couldn't believe how easy it was uh, then we had to wait for the pathology report it was about a week and it came back no cancer so I didn't need any chemo I was out of the woods uh, the oncology nurse said you know right now your insurance would cover reconstruction at hundred percent and I was like I wasn't even thinking that at that time, but uh, I thought, well, if they offer it me now, they might not offer me that a year later. So uh, I had reconstruction surgery. It was two outpatient surgeries, some office visits. It was super easy. So life started getting back to normal. You know, I raised my three kids. They've all turned out to be great people. In about 2017, uh, after my kids left home, I had always been like a social drinker. But uh, I think that's when my f switch flipped and I started to have a problem. And uh, I never got a DUI, I never showed up for work drunk, but uh, one Christmas gathering, I drank a whole liter of Fireball plus some other liquor. And that was kind of my wake up call that I needed to start seeking help for it. And thinking of my parents being alcoholics, I knew you know, I could have tendencies to, to have uh, more risk than the average person. So I, I uh, worked the AA program, I've been sober six years, I found a love for the guitar and love for writing music and uh, I started learning how to play guitar and with the help of John Hutchinson I produced an album called Broken Times. This was 
uh, during COVID and, uh, you know, when our country was in a wreck and uh, just songs about my own broken times, our country and just some faith songs. And uh, it was really fun for me to do that. So life was going along pretty good. And uh, my daughter in about the year of 2020, she started just saying to me, mom, I just don't feel good. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't keep my weight up. I uh, just feel super exhausted and the doctors blow me off. They do tests for Lyme. They just don't know what's wrong with me. And this went on about a year. And finally she called me one day and said, I have stage two breast cancer, mom. And I'm just, my heart just sunk. I just, uh, I remember them telling me after my ordeal, you know, that she should be tested at about the age of 40 for the breast cancer gene. But anyway, at 27, she calls me and says, I have stage two breast cancer. And um, I remember for about a day and a half, all I could do was cry. I, and I kept saying, God, I can't lose her. I just can't lose her. And, you know, why didn't you give it to me and let me, you could have given it to me with a death sentence, but not my daughter. So I, somehow I texted my boss back about something and said I've been a hot mess and I'm sorry and you know, I didn't get back to you and told her that you know my daughter had just been diagnosed with stage two breast cancer and uh, my boss texted me back a few hours later and said Dr. Smith a radiologist would like to talk to you and I'm like okay and uh, Dr. Ben Smith is like uh, he specializes in breast imaging over at St. Mary's plus breast health and so all I remember about our little meeting I had with him was he said, Vicki, we are very good medically at treating breast cancers. And um, anyway, I went home and at that point said, I have to believe she's going to be okay. I just have to believe it. And so it was at that point that, you know, I just decided to believe she was going to be okay and figure it out if, if I didn't get my prayers answered that way. Uh, my daughter started 16 rounds of chemo and it was 16 different chemo treatments, that's what I'll say. And uh, she had her surgery. During the, her 16 treatments, I went down to Minneapolis about every three weeks. And, uh, and during that time, I decided to write a second album just because when I was home, I needed to keep my mind off of as much as I could. And so I wrote another album, produced it called Courage and Cancer, and it's about healing songs. And I wrote a lot of those songs the first time I had COVID, so probably a very good time to be um, studying the Bible about healing scriptures. <laughs> anyway, between it all, God got us through it. She, uh, had, she had surgery and they found no cancer. And her oncologist told her at a follow-up appointment that less than 6% of the time that chemo works that well. And so this has been about a year and a half ago that she's got had a clean diagnosis and she's doing well, she's back at work. My daughter's an ER nurse in Shakopee and uh, her husband's a police officer. Yeah, but anyway, I'm just, I'm thankful and uh, that God healed her. And uh, I remember at her first diagnosis thinking, God, you, you really, you know, you really did me wrong this time. I'm gonna go out and drink. But you know, it, it was like uh, one thought and I went, said no that's not the answer you know I got to believe and trust God for her one song I really liked on the album Courage and Cancer is you're going to grow old and that song was written because I had a dream one night that my daughter was like 70 and had like eight grandchildren running around and I got up that morning and wrote that song and it was kind of like my favorite song on there because it was like giving me more hope and more faith and, uh, and that was before we got her, her pathology report back. And uh, right after we got her uh, pathology report back after she had her surgery that she had no cancer, I must have come a day or two later, I came to church and they played the song Gratitude. And I could not stop crying through that whole song because it, that's what I felt like toward God. I'm so thankful. And I really want to thank everybody in this church that knew I was going through that. Um, they prayed for me. They were always asking me how I was doing, if I needed anything. And so I'm thankful to all of you out there that were so supportive in prayer and just in any way you could be. So thanks for that. And, uh, and during this uh, last year too, we had a our youngest grandbaby, this is my son's 
little girl. Uh, she was diagnosed with a heart defect and had to have open heart surgery and, and she came through that okay and her name's Brielle Ross and she's, she's beautiful today so she still may need another surgery but uh, anyway she's doing good. I'm just uh, so thankful for everything God's done for me and I don't live a perfect Christian life and uh, I don't have as much faith as some people I know, but um, I'm thankful for what God has done for me today. And uh, one thing I really learned in this church in the last six months is about tithing. And uh, I had tried the 10% tithing, 10% other times. And, you know, I thought it was going to be like a, a pulling a slot machine. And, and, uh, and, uh, I would just be upset when the first month and I didn't like just see all kinds of riches come in. But uh, this time I, I did it and have more of an attitude of, I, it's, it's about trusting God, that's what it is. It's, I don't even think God wants that amount of 10%, I think he wants your trust. And, uh, and our finances are a lot better and you know I still have to fig do some frugal living and stuff like that. But um, it's it's just been finances have been much better. And I've learned that since becoming a member of this church. And I remember at first I thought I might have to go to Pastor Ryan and ask for half of it back, <laughs> but I didn't. So anyway, um, so with that, I hope this helps somebody. I'll be glad to, if anybody wants any, a copy of either of my albums or even wants to email me about this, you know somebody going through this, they recommend now that at age 25, if you have a strong family history that you have that gene test. So uh, I really hope today that this helps somebody and um, I'm really proud of my daughter. She never complained much. She never, she just kind of kept going forward. So on this Mother's Day, my faith in God is stronger than ever. I, and I hope this has helped your faith grow. God bless and happy Mother's Day to all of you out there.